Yeah, so today I want to show you quickly some uh, interesting stocks, some really some rockets. Look here at Amazon. It costs the stock costs four hundred percent, four hundred dollars. Sorry, and it went up since nineteen nineteen seven. Like here, you can see the um, dot com bubble. Afterwards, it went down. People thought about it's going bankrupt, but it didn't. So it it recovered. It took a few years then. Jeff Bezos kept on driving up the e-commerce business, selling books and all that stuff. And look here, it took forever, but then it skyrocketed. It's like a rocket that the stock went up like... It went up like, you can see it here, since going public in 19... In 1997, uh, in May, it went up 26,000%. That's an amazing... That's an amazing performance. So I will show you some other stocks that are just impressive. Let's, for example, look at Apple long term. The long term chart is um, quite amazing. Amazing. It, the stock costs nine hundred five hundred forty nine dollars. Uh, long term, it uh, uh, you can make with Apple on the long run twenty percent. It showed in the uh, in the past twenty percent average a year. Uh, look at here. Since 1984, the stock Apple went up 16,336%. That's a, like, it was the stock cost, that, uh, you have to take out some many stock splits and, and so on. And uh, from $3.48 to now, this amazing price of 544 So how do you do an analysis? Apple is doing, is uh, paying a dividend and it pays you a dividend yield of 2.2% and it pays out $12.20 every year on a yearly basis based on this price 544 you get to the 2.2% yield let's look at the income statement to uh, you can better understand why it went up so much look at that one revenue from 2010 65 billion it almost doubled next year 108 billion and now 156 billion um, operating income it's very profitable as you can see here it makes a third of this is the operating income a third of the revenue operating income <coughs> okay let's look further the net income is also amazing and it is one of those reasons is they're very good with taxes the tax the tax payments are not that enormous they are pretty much 8 billion taxes on 33 billion operating income or here 14 bil uh, billion on 55 it's a quite a cheaper tax rate and they have no debt so that's by interest payments there are no interest payments it's even getting more with they have a positive net income interest income so there are no interests to be paid on a credit on loans or nothing so that makes the net earnings so huge compared to the operating incomes you can see there is that issue that they have no debt apple is so strong the balance sheet is brutally strong you can see here that they are even after they bought back a lot of stocks there are still the market cap is 493 billion and the enterprise value is 475 billion so the difference tells you they are swimming in cash it's um, roughly 20 billion cash they have net net cash so there's no debt at all okay what else you can look at so the pricing the PE ratio is roughly between 13 and four, uh, 11 it depends on which year you look out if you look out it's roughly 12 PE ratio of 12 it is a fair deal that's what I can say but Warren Buffett would he buy it I'm not sure it's a technology stock usually he's careful with technology stocks but let's look further maybe he likes it I'm not sure I, I like the stock kind of I'm pretty much liking it because look at the profit margin it's 21 percent uh, net margin that's an amazing number and the operating margin is 28 there are a few companies out there that make that much. Technology makes it possible because it's the scale. 
it's a uh, it is um, here another let's look at the cash flow statement I like that a lot and let's quickly look at it Apple's cash flow statement so they make a net income of 30 they made that of 37 billion and so the cash flow they generate out of their business is much higher than the net income I like that there is a nice difference so it shows you its cash flow positive how much do they spend how do how much do they reinvest of the cash flow so they generated in this year 53 billion and they reinvested into their core business 8 billion so there's a free cash flow there's a huge difference and this money the um, CEO has available to do whatever he wants to do and so if you take the 53 minus the um, 8 billion you have roughly 45 billion in free cash flow so now let's look what he did with it the CEO invested 10 billion in dividends and he bought back the stock for um, 22 billion so 32 billion went back in total in the last year to his shareholders that's quite a lot and there was still money left because the free cash flow as I said before 53 minus 8 is 45 and he gave back 22 billion so there's still a gap so that's that's rock solid the balance sheet is rock solid it's rock solid and it's just like there's so much cash look here the balance sheet and like cash 14 billion short-term investments 26 billion net receivables 24 billion this is like long-term investments 106 billion property and plan 60 billion there is this is rock solid that's rock solid and long-term debt is a little bit but if you take in all this all this cash cash and here short-term investments there's no you you can zero it out there's not no debt at all if you if you compare both um, both things so let's look at the major shareholders it's pretty much it's um, you don't have really strong shell because it's so huge in Fancord is number one they own 43 million shares worth of 20 billion State Street these are usually um, index investors they have to own this stock because it is so important a big chunk of the S&P 500 is based on Apple okay let's look at another stock uh, Warren Buffett it's a very great performer it's Netflix Warren Buffett would not buy it I don't think so uh, because they don't pay a dividend as you can see here no dividend and the PE ratio is very expensive the market cap is 22 billion this company went up a lot in the last year and also total look at the chart the interactive you go to charts interactive you see here the stock costs 375 dollars it went up since 2002 as you can see here five almost 4900 percent since May 2002 what I said before it doesn't pay any um, it's on all-time high it doesn't pay any dividends and the PE ratio is very expensive what makes it so interesting it's a growth story it has um, probably a lot of look here 2 billion revenues 3.2 billion revenues 3.6 billion revenues and it keeps on going if you look at the quarterly daughter uh, not the annual the quarterly it makes here last quarter 1.1 billion dollar before 1 billion yeah it's the growth is not that dramatic but overall the future looks very good but to be honest the cash flow is a little lousy because they invest a lot and in the online streaming it is an entertainment company that streams out videos online and so the um, net income is not if you take a look at the cash flow statement the net income is 17 17 million it's very small the cash flow is very small and they invest more than they make so there's no free cash flow it's actually negative so they made 22 million in cash flow and reinvested 41 so that is that is um, they have to they invest a lot 
and it's a great stock, it has a future, but Warren Buffett would not probably would probably not invest. It is him. There's not enough tradition for him, but whatever. I'm just going to show you how you can analyze stocks. Here you can see the largest shareholder, Carl Icahn, of owned 9% based on September 30th. I think he reduced some shares. He owns 5.5 million shares of Netflix. And the other shareholders you can see below. And yeah, let's look at another stock. Um, another amazing stock is what else can we look at? Or you should look at Abercrombie and Fitch, a bad stock. In the last, it's one of the worst performers. Abercrombie, the fashion, the label company. Uh, it's a small market cap, 2.5 billion. Let's look at it. I don't own it, but I just want to show you. It has no debt, net debt. It is debt free. Here you can see there's no difference. The uh, forward looking PE ratio based on the expectation of the analyst for 2015 is 14. It's not that expensive. And the price sales multiple, the sales multiple is 0.5, half times revenue. It doesn't look expensive at all. And enterprise value to EBDA 5.5 5 .5 is not a lot. But here's the problem. It is not profitable anymore and this you can see here um, in this year last year 2012 they made 4.5 bill, 4 billion in revenues they made a nice operating income of 374 million and net was also positive with 237 million but now here is the problem quarterly result the last quarter was losing money 35 million and before you have seen other quarters losing money 30 13 million dollars and that's the problem also on net basis 15 million loss last quarter and the revenue as you can see here is slowing a little bit down because here look in this quarter you had 1.4 billion and now you are here that's okay there's the Christmas season let's look what the um, analyst um, are expecting, analyst estimates, and here you can see the problem. Um, these are the earnings, analyst estimates, um, earnings estimates here. They expect for this year a net earning, current year 1.47 EPS earnings per share, and a year ago it was almost 3 dollars earnings per share so that means it goes down half so and that's the problem so that's why the stock is down and look at the chart that shows you a lot and but therefore the stock is cheap so you have always if the earnings are down the stock goes down but there at some point you can find value and I don't know if it's now value or not you have to say that um, let's see here so the stock was in the highs was in the um, eighty dollar around in 2007 and uh, now we are around 32 it's quite interesting to see how the stock reacts and the major holders are here the CEO is running it for a while. He owns a lot. He owns 1 million shares. It's roughly 1.5% or something. It is now, uh, it is, yeah, it could be 1.5% roughly. So that's quite a lot. He's very powerful. And based on the shares outstanding, he has a huge, a huge amount of uh, shares, 1.5%. Oh, and the largest shareholder is Invesco. They own almost 8% of the outstanding stocks. And yeah, that's all for today. I hope it helps you.